No, I, I doubt that. But the thing is, he hasn't got much of his own money. The late Queen Elizabeth, his mother, used to give him about two hundred and fifty thousand um, pounds a year for him to live on. He hasn't got that anymore. King Charles stopped that when he became king. And um, the problem is that there's a lot of uh, leaking. And I don't mean people telling people stories. I mean, actually, water coming through the roof and through the windows. And um, King Charles has said he can stay there yeah. if he looks after everything and re repairs it all. But I don't think that he can do that. What is actually quite interesting and not cunning, but almost cunning of King Charles is to let him stay there because his ex-wife, the Duchess of York, who had um, a very long um, operation for cancer, breast cancer, and she's recovering there. Now, you know, it would look absolutely dreadful if he says you've got to get out now, which is what he said before she um, was discovered that she had cancer. Mm. So but I where does he go, Angela? Sorry to sorry to interrupt you, right? But but I mean, let's say he goes in a year or two years. I mean, where does he go? Because he can't sell the thing, can he? I don't think. So he's not like he's going to go, right, I'm going to sell this for 10 million quid and then he just has it off in Marbella for the rest of his life. Yeah, he can do that. Why not? I, um, assume, I assume it was royal property, not royal property. Well, his grandmother gave it to him. The Queen oh, Mother yeah. gave it to him in 2004. So um, it was on her will. And so he's got that. And so mm. he does own it, really. Um, and it, I think he would have to think very carefully what he wants to do with that. But I think there's got, how many windows have they got? 30 rooms with lots of... Um, Poor bloke. Yeah. Poor bloke. And, and who yeah. needs to have so many rooms? Well, it is. This is it. I, I, I've got to be, I don't, look, I really, I don't like to see anybody you know, turfed out of where they live. Don't get me wrong. I'm not calling that. But I, 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 do, I do wonder whether or not public sympathy might be ever so slightly li limited for him when you think that maybe he can sell it and make quite a bit of money off it so he's not going to be left out on the street and also you know it is quite big right there is there is that but can i can i move on angela to another topic there's one i'm a bit more interested in all right so Meghan yeah. markle's reported political ambitions to become the senator for california have been quashed after Lafonso Butler was sworn in yesterday, rumours have been swirling about a possible run for office for the Duchess ever since the death of Senator Diane Feinstein was announced on Friday. Do you think there was ever a realistic chance of this happening, Angela? No, none. I mean, I think her PR team, at any opportunity, want to bring her to the front pages and they'll say anything to keep her within the sort of talking for by everybody. Um, but she could never really become a member of the um, cabinet or because she doesn't... I mean, when she went to America, she made all the children aged seven and all the teachers there sign that they wouldn't say anything nasty or rude or negative about her book. The, and, mm. and so I think that if she's doing that, she won't want anyone to speak about her. We'll all be going to... Yeah. Um, it's interesting, right, because... It, it, but being in politics, they say, you know, they say it's, it's like show business for ugly people, which certainly doesn't apply to Meghan Markle, by the way. But what it is, is, is a kind of a glorified popularity contest. And if you are very thin skinned and fickle and want to consistently control the narrative about yourself and the questions that you're asked and the way that you're presented, I would suggest, Angela, that going into politics is not the right career for you. No, of course it's not. But also she wants to cling on to her titles and you have to drop your titles if you want to do anything politically for America. Yeah. So um, she doesn't want to do that. And don't forget as well that the appointment is just for a year until, the, um, until they vote again. So she might find herself pushed out All right. with no title. She's not going to get it back. I just want to finish this with a, a little clip that, I don't know, maybe might bring a smile to people's faces. Ah, there he is. That's someone who's deeply popular. That's someone else who's deeply popular. Yes, that's the Prince and Princess of Wales. They met with Windrush veterans to help celebrate Black History Month, and William had the room laughing with his little gag. Watch. Fantastic. <laughs>
Uh, yeah, I mean, you could probably tell any joke if you're the future king and you'd have them in stitches, wouldn't you? Work a room, work a room. But uh, amid the clamour for reparations, though, Angela, are the Wales is the key to securing the future of the monarchy, do you think? Um, I don't think so. I mean, if you think there's 56 people, um, countries from the Commonwealth that voluntarily want to stay within the Commonwealth. And I think that it was very rude when young people go and visit them, that they start immediately asking for money. Um, and if they want to be independent, King Charles and Prince William don't mind because it's actually the joining the whole thing of the Commonwealth. You don't have to actually be part of it or, um, you know, no. allow people to run the country. Yeah. No, I, I, I agree with you. Look, thank you very much, Angela. Angela Lavin, there, journalist, royal biographer. Thank you very, very much.